component is a module, right? It hasn't got any, if I take this thing, these things definitely agree on outside. Okay, so these things are modules. Now what if I want to take a maximal proper module? Well, there's one. If I include that one, then I have to include the whole lot. But then there's one over here as well, so that one, and then I can take the two at the top as well. So there may be several ways of doing it for uh, disconnected graphs. But I don't care because these, can, these graphs are reconstructable. And that's what I'm really trying to do, of course. And the reason why they're reconstructable is if you look in the deck, if I look inside the deck of one of these things, you're going to see each of these components. And you can sort of just pick the components out of the deck one by one and go, right, well, I've got this one component and I need this many copies of it and this many copies of the vertex, deleted versions of it. And you just sort of pick them off and then you've got each component and then you just sort of stick them together. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you right now, and the two that I've left, is, uh, well, you can essentially do this sort of, this, this reconstruction for disconnected graphs, which is well known, it's been around for a long time, you can essentially do the same thing for non-prime graphs. So providing you've got a, um, uh, some, some non-trivial module, there's quite a lot you can start saying about the reconstruction of the graph. So, uh, oh, I better tell you what this is. This prime graph here, I'm going to call the skeleton. So, so what's the definition again of skeleton? The definition of skeleton is the prime graph that if I blow up each of the vertices by its appropriate module, Gives me the original graph, and this this thing is unique for a for a non-prime graph. Okay. Well, it's unique for a prime graph as well. It's itself. Okay. So the reason why obviously this isn't really going to work for prime graphs is because, well, yeah, it's not telling me. So what can I reconstruct? I can reconstruct. I can't quite do all non-prime graphs because. This is the graph reconstruction conjecture. It always throws things at you, particularly things related to graph automorphism. So, so it, always, it always becomes impossible at some stage to do something. But I can reconstruct the skeleton. That's relatively straightforward. I just have to look at the deck. And I look at the skeletons of the graphs in the deck, and somewhere I'm guaranteed to see that one. And then I just have to argue that it's the largest skeleton I find, and then we're done. So I can reconstruct the skeleton, and I can reconstruct a list of all the modules. The maximum module. Okay, so I've got sort of, I've got the template, and I've got a list of modules, and all I have to do is put them back in, right? Yeah. So here, it was easy. This is essentially what they do here. They get you all the modules, and then you put them back in. But then when you put them back in, it's easy, because you just put them there, and they don't relate to each other. Whereas here, I need to be slightly careful, because, you know, maybe that one went in there, and <coughs> that one went somewhere else. And the annoying thing about the graph reconstruction conjecture is whenever you try to reconstruct a graph, you succeed, and you succeed very quickly. So, uh, but th th there never seems to be any sort of general technique that you can use to do that. Okay, so I can reconstruct these things. Um, and in fact, I can do slightly more as well. I can list all the maximal modules. And indeed, I can list them, I can partition them into the, uh, I can partition them into the orbits of the automorphism group of the skeleton. So I know for a particular orbit, so say this, this graph here has got two orbits, it's, uh, there's only one non-trivial symmetry, and that's to pick the thing up and flip it over, and it looks like the same thing. And that swaps those two vertices, and it swaps those two vertices. So what this says is that um, I can, uh, I know that this module has to be one of these two end vertices, and this module has to be one of the two middle ones, but I don't know whether it goes like this, or maybe whether the big one and that one are next to each other. Orbits 
And this is enough to let me reconstruct the graph in a fair number of cases. And uh, so the uh, final thing I want to say is that we can. There are a lot of special cases, I'm not going to tell you what they all are, but there are things you can do such as, uh, I can reconstruct this graph for example, because in this orbit here, this module, if I delete a vertex from it, I don't see it anywhere else. Okay. So if there exists a module, n, such that n minus x, the sum vertex in the module, is not in the list of x model. Okay, so if there's some vertex I can take out of there, then, well, I can take it out, and I know that that's going to exist somewhere in my deck, and that is enough to let me reconstruct, so I can go, well, I know exactly where that came from, and everything else is correct, so you just put the module you wanted back in. So there are things like that, so there are conditions on size modules, and of course this is, in fact, not in M. In fact, it only needs to be not in the remainder of the orbit. And it only needs to be not in its partition. Uh, there are other, other cases as well, conditions on the skeleton. For example, if the skeleton is, has a trivial automorphism group, then this thing automatically carries through by this orbit, because everything it has to be in its own orbit. We get a skeleton and name, I'll call it A. Plot A is true. And there's cases like that. And I'll stop there. Thank you. Questions? Yes. In Bolivashi's results, what does almost all mean? Is that all the time as many or probably as you want? Uh, probably as you want. I can't remember exactly what they what they are. But, yeah. Yes. Is that uh, is that last result maybe that automorphism K a uh, trivial? Yeah. Okay. So so this 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 lot is is all our work. But it's it people have been sort of knocking on the door for a while, but they haven't really figured it out. Well, I should also mention that this is um, this isn't going to be much use to you unless you can of course tell from the deck whether your graph is actually prime or not prime. But thankfully somebody's done that for us. So there's a recognition problem before you can do your reconstruction for that. Yes? Can you classify prime graphs? Ah, well there's some nice properties of prime graphs. And the nicest thing about them from a point of view of graph reconstruction is that there's a result of Schmerl and Trotter uh, that says that every prime graph except for one particular family contains a prime graph with one vertex pure. It's kind of tantalizing. But there is also a, a, another thing I should admit, is that almost all graphs, again, this is probability one type thing, almost all graphs are prime. So, yeah, maybe this, but you know, Polybash did almost all graphs, so I'm doing the other ones. <laughs> Thank the speaker again.